Hello everyone. In this video I want to demonstrate how we can interact with a Jupyter Notebook that's stored on GitHub. And we'll be using some software called Binder to do this. So first let's navigate to my GitHub page. And it's going to be github.com rmartin977. And that takes you to what's known as a GitHub page. And here what we see is uh, three different repositories. And we're going to take a look at the MNIST classification repository. And what we see there is some files. Uh, we notice one of these files is an image. Let's just click on that and it will display the image. It's a small image here of these digits. Okay. And what we're interested in is looking at this uh, Jupyter Notebook, which has the file extension IPy Notebook. And if we click on it, we're going to get a view of the notebook. And that would take a moment. So again, this will load a static copy of the Python Notebook. It's static in the sense that we can't interact with the cell, execute cells. Now a Jupyter Notebook consists of cells. And you can see that the code cells are numbered in one, in three, not necessarily in sequence. So you have a combination of code cells and markdown cells where you can enter some explanatory text to explain what your code is doing. Well, let's go back and now go down and we see this launch binder, which will launch the Jupyter Notebook so we can run it and interact with it. So here we have it. Now it could take literally a couple minutes to load the notebook, but once it's loaded, things run pretty fast. So if I go up to this first cell here and double click it, I can actually see the markdown, or you can also use HTML <clears throat> corresponding to that cell. So that's what we call a markdown cell. To execute a cell, you come up here and you hit run. So that cell ran, which it rendered the markdown. You know, same with here. If I double click it, it's markdown and run it. Well, here's my first code cell to run. And you notice when I select it, there's a green border around it, which means I'm in the execute mode. And you can execute it by hitting run from up here or hitting shift enter. Now, if I hit escape, notice that turns to command mode where I can enter some Jupyter commands. Like if I hit the command B, that's going to put enter input a new cell below. So I'm still in command mode because I see the blue there. I can hit an A, which will enter a cell above. If I hit D twice while I'm on a cell, it will delete it. Okay. Now let's go ahead and execute this cell right here. And you see there's an asterisk while it's executing and it comes back to the number when it's completed. So you can just hit run and step through. Uh, here, this cell is going to actually load the MNIST data in. Okay. Okay, and I see a problem here, so let me pause for a moment. Okay, we're back. That problem is corrected. This cell actually was how I was previously loading it. That's commented out. And this is the actual cell that's loading it. We had to do a gzip with the data. Okay. So here we see the asterisk. It's taking, a time, taking some time to load in the data. This next command is going to, it's going to give us the shape for our training and test data. Let's execute it. And we get this. Now you said, well, before we executed, there were numbers there. 
well, that was from the previous execution. What you can do is you can come up here to cell and hit all outputs and hit clear. Let's do that. So from the previous run, all the data that was generated, that's been cleared. And you can come back now and rerun the notebook. You can run it all in one step by saying run all. Or you can do this and just sequence through running it. So now let's run down here again where we uh, loaded the data, the asterisks. And doing a little processing and then we can see the size of what we have here. <clears throat> uh, here we pull out one of the digits and do a simple plot of it. So this is how, so actually as you can see we can come down here, you can change values and for example here I'm saying plot the digit that's in row 5. You know, maybe you want to go up and change that. Say, hey, let me plot the digit that's in row 7. And we execute that. And it turns out that a th the digit 3 is there. I'm going to go back to 5, though. So here we are interacting with this notebook. We're changing instructions and able to see the output. Uh, continuing to go down <clears throat> and here run in this line right here we're actually doing the linear regression where we're computing the parameters for the model and this is going to involve solving 60,000 equations and 785 unknowns. So it took a moment there, but it solved and it returned the result in this vector of parameters, 785 unknowns. There they are, they're stored in beta. So I think I won't execute the rest of this, but I think that gives you an idea how you can get in here, interact with this notebook, run it, see what it gives. And then you can go into these other cells right here and enter any uh, Python commands that you want. You know, look at your current directory, list the contents in your directory, okay, and, uh, you know, do some basic uh, math. I think we have numpy.stored, so maybe you want to do the sign of some number. Let's see if that gives us, okay. In fact, we could even uh, uh, do the following. Let me just demonstrate here that we can enter code and execute it. I'm going to create a vector of values. Uh, from 0 to 2 pi. increments of 0.1. Let's try that. And let's then let's print those out and see if that works. Yeah, there we have the x values. Then we can say plot.show, no, plot.plot. Plot. Let's plot it. x sine x. Now I'm prefixing sine with np. And let's do this. And there we have it. Entering and executing code with no Jupyter software installed on our home computer, doing it all on the internet. Now if I go back up here to my GitHub page, leave binder, we'll do it this way. Uh, you'll see that I have over here a repository called Python code and there's some Python, you can 
store Python programs in there that you want to share with others. And like I have this program called Hex Dump. And there's the Python code for that. So you can download that. And there's different ways of downloading it. You can look at what, what's called a raw version of it and just cut and paste this down. And also, we can go back and there is a another repository, COVID-19 data. Now, this has the launch binder. Let's just look at a static version of this notebook, COVID. And here's another notebook that you can execute. And what's interesting about this notebook is it goes out to Johns Hopkins and gets the latest COVID data, and specifically the number of deaths in the U.S., and you can run this, and it will generate this chart, and this is the final chart. Matter of fact, let me see if I can demonstrate that. So here, if you notice this chart, the latest data we have, this is July 4th, 5th, 6th. Looks like it goes as far as the 6th. So I'm going to try, uh, well, we would have to go to binder before we could execute it. This is a static copy. So if you go back and you hit launch the notebook, okay, which will take some time. Let's pause it. Okay, so here we're looking at a version of the notebook that we can execute. And again, I'm going to go down and look at the final plot, which is showing data up to July 6th. And I'm going to attempt to come up here and say run all. Run all. And see if that will execute all of these cells, go and retrieve the data from Johns Hopkins, update my charts. Now let's come down here and see if it worked. Yes, it did. So now we have July 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th data. So in this video, we've demonstrated, talked a little bit about what a Jupyter Notebook is. It contains cells, which could have code in them that you could execute, but you can also have cells where you store explanatory data, which is written in markup, could be HTML. And there's a lot more to the Jupyter Notebooks. You can, we've demonstrated how you can go to GitHub and execute a notebook and interact with it. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Thank you.